Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Dead Rabbit Radio. I'm your host, Jason Carpenter. I'm having a great day. I hope you guys are having a great day too. You know, it's funny because, well, it's funny to me. An episode or two, it was two episodes ago, I did the story, My Haunted Apartment. And I, I recorded it and then it was like, oh, this is a cool story to tell. I've gotten so many emails and texts from people who know me personally saying, thanks a lot, bro. That episode was super spooky. Rabid Fish on YouTube says he normally listens to the show to go to sleep. This is the first episode that he wasn't able to fall asleep to because he was so creepy. And I woke up this morning to a text from another friend and she's like, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. That episode was super creepy. And I'm, I'm glad I didn't set out for it to be really creepy. But I'm glad that it affected my audience on that level. I don't know. I find that interesting. And before we get started into the story, I actually got some fan art describing that episode from Ian through email. And I'll post it on I'll post it in the show notes. If you're watching YouTube, it's there right now. It is a draw it is an illustration in MS Paint of that episode. And if I can gather it right, it's me in bed with a giant stick trying to shut my light off. A ghost in underwear hovering away a book. And I believe those are Franz's arms sliding underneath the door. That may be another closet ghost, I'm not for sure, but it does look like Franz. And his sleeves are orange. Oh, and a picture of my microphone with a bunch of dollar signs on it, because, yeah, it is quite expensive. So thank you, Ian, for that awesome... I was laughing so hard when I got this, and I was out with a bunch of people, and I was like, I can't really show this to anyone because they didn't listen to the episode that I knew of. So, but I appreciate all the feedback. I'm glad the episode was super creepy. And I don't know how I would top that if I told any more personal stories. I was thinking maybe I could tell some true crime stories. But then I was like, eh, no. True crimes that I've been involved in probably wouldn't fly over very well. Okay, so we got that. And again, I appreciate all that. Let's go ahead and move on to our first story. Now, the reason why I'm covering... I, I've had the story ready to go for probably about a month. And I was thinking, oh, you know, it's... I cover a lot of mass delusions. And I was like, I've done a couple of those. But the reason why I'm covering it right now is because, I'm not trying to get political, but this is going on in the news, with uh, Jesse Smollett. He was the actor from Empire who now has been charged with staging a fake hate crime. It's all allegations right now. But there have been talks saying that this could have actually led to big consequences. Like, this, him staging this thing could have set, sparked off a firestorm in the city of Chicago, thinking that it was real, And it could have even spread to other places. People could have said, enough's enough. We're done with this hate crime. We're done with this type of racism. And it could have really gotten out of control. And I thought, now is a good time to talk about the West Bank fainting incident. Because it's the same thing. Now, it wasn't fake. It was real, kind of. We're in the year 1983. It's late March. 8 a.m., there's a 17-year-old student. She's a Palestinian girl. Her throat. Starts itching really, really bad. She's in class. She can't breathe. Now, imagine if you're sitting in class. It's a totally normal day. You see a young woman walk in, and she grabs her throat, and... (gasps) That would be creepy. Now, of course, you're probably going to think, oh, you know, poor girl. She probably has something wrong with her. She's sick or something like that. I hope I don't catch it. Eventually, she gets a headache. She starts to get dizzy. They end up removing her from the class and just send her home. Over the next two hours, so now you're sitting in this class. You're at school. And you're like, that's weird. And two hours later, six students start. uh, 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 uh." And you're sitting in this crowd. And these other people around you are starting to have the same symptoms that she had. And then your teacher. (gasps) Now, at this point, panic starts to set in, of course. Now you think it's something airborne, and it's something incredibly contagious. A couple of the students started saying, who were affected by this thing, said they could smell sulfur, they could smell rotten eggs. Eventually, the local police, the local health authorities, show up at the school. This is in the West Bank. I don't know if I said that. Well, I guess it's in the title, but this is in the West Bank, so... It, this is in, it, it's complicated, but there's like Israel and the West Bank, and there's Palestinians and there's the Israelis, and it's a volatile situation. It's always been a volatile situation. And you start to have people in the West Bank, which is primarily Palestinian, go, there's been some sort of gas release. 
and it's affecting these students. So the public health authorities, that's why the police show up. They're trying to figure out what is going on. They begin going through the school. They're thinking it's one of three things. There's some sort of gas, a natural gas leak, or a something that would be caused through a faulty system. Two, there's an illness spreading through the school. Or three, this is some sort of attack against the Palestinians. So they're really, really suspicious of what's going on. They begin searching the school to try to figure out what could be causing it. While they're doing that, that same day, investigators are looking around, looking for something. They look into a room. They see another girl. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. While they're searching for it, 17 more students come down with this. This all started, like I said, at 8 a.m. By 11 a.m., they shut down the school. They just shut it down. Five days later, they didn't, nobody died. And they started to notice a pattern. It mostly affected women. It was mostly women dealing with this. Women and girls. Five days later, though, in another city in the West Bank, people are walking down the street, mostly young women, walking down... (gasps) At that point, you really think that it has to be some sort of a chemical or biological weapon attack. And at this point, there were rumors that a car was driving through this city, Jenin, this is a different city in the West Bank, and it was emitting a cloud of smoke behind it. More than just like, more like smog. It was something that it was like releasing a weapon. So now you have outbreaks in this city and then in other cities. And this went on and on. Now, the Palestinians were demanding answers for this. Because again, they think that there's some sort of chemical or biological weapon attack being used on them. But the Israeli government says, hey guys, listen, we're getting, we're getting it too. It turns out that in other areas in the West Bank, Female Israeli soldiers, not as high as an amount of the Palestinian women who are getting it, but female Israeli soldiers, <gasps> they'd just be sitting in their barracks and all of a sudden they couldn't breathe. They started getting dizzy. They're having headaches. They were fainting. I guess I should have said that earlier. They all fainted. That's why it's called the fainting incident. I guess I should have said that a long couple minutes ago. 943 people hospitalized over this over the course of about two weeks. People walking down the street, going to school, sitting at work, all of a sudden, can't breathe, get dizzy, get a headache, fall over. When it was happening to the Israelis, they started thinking maybe the Palestinians are using some sort of chemical weapon. When it was happening to the Palestinians, they thought Israelis, they were using some sort of chemical weapon. In the end, they figured out that 20% of the cases were related to the inhalation of some sort of gas. And they tracked down that at the original school, at the original school, and the original school was in Araba, there was a subtoxic concentration of a gas that was coming out of a leaky toilet. But even they're like, this, it, that's the only thing we can point at, but that's only for this school. But, so what they think is that a few people at that school actually got hit by this thing, at the original school. And then as they went to their neighboring towns, went home, and they were telling people about it, it started that little mass delusion going on. And then once the Israeli women, the soldiers were hearing about it, they started to also have those effects. The other option is is that a chemical weapon or biological weapon was used, but there's never been any proof of that. But it brought them to, once again, the brink of a major conflict. If you thought the young women in your community were being gassed with some sort of toxic substance, you would want to stop that. We've dealt with a lot of mass delusions, like the dancing delusion and um, the laughing epidemic in Africa. And they've always been fairly benign. People died from the dancing delusion, but I mean, it didn't almost spark a conflict. But that's why it's important when we look at stuff like mass delusions, how quickly, how volatile the situation can be. Because if they weren't, if the rumors had kept spreading, if this delusion had kept going, the other side would have had no choice but to react to it. Pretty crazy stuff. Pretty crazy stuff. If I, it would be your only answer. If women in your town were falling over, choking, and you were fine... And you, you would think someone had... Re- First off, you'd be having a heart attack because you'd be afraid you'd be next, but you would have that idea that there has to, this has to be an attack. 
this absolutely has to be an attack. Because again, they didn't know what it was when it first started. But luckily, cooler heads prevailed on both sides, and it was just chalked up to another bizarre case of mass delusion with a little, little hint of truth. Little hint of truth. There was that. Some of them did inhale some gas, but they don't really know what it was. Maybe it was chemical weapon. Nobody knows. That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell, too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.